All right, so diving into the quick question uh, segment here. Without fail, if someone comes in and they say, hey, uh, quick question, it is bound to, they're bound to be there for 45 minutes, an hour. Just listening to us explain the differences between things, the options, um, where they went wrong, politely correcting them, no matter what it is. If mm-hmm. someone says, hey, quick question, it's bound to take a long time to answer that question. Sure. So in this long form content here, I like to dive into it and talk about it, talk through the entire, um, the entire question um, and you know the answer to that question because there's going to be a ton of variables that go into it. Um, so, Sean, quick this, question. this quick question actually has a little bit of a asterisk next to it. Oh. This quick question is coming from somebody who is standing in front, just giving you a little context, okay. who is standing in front of our context. symbol wall. Right, They're standing in front of our symbol wall with a confused look on their face, and they turn to you, and they say, quick question, what's the difference? What is the difference? Wow, where do you be? It's not a quick question. It's not a quick question. That is not a quick question. That's the point. Yeah, that is the point. So, where do you start? Where do you dive in? Do you dive into materials? Do you dive into brands? Do you dive into into feeling them out, knowing, trying to figure out exactly how much information that would yeah. will not be information yeah, overload? Because you could I, talk I, about symbols. I for think days. I'll qualify uh, whoever I'm talking to first because you don't want to get ahead of uh, you know yourself with uh, talking about. Uh, you know, the different styles of metals and cast and BA bronze to someone that's maybe just starting out or doesn't even care nonetheless or is just looking for something on a budget or just going for sound. I mean, you know, so you say, oh, well, what do you have now? You, you know, it's always good to ask questions, you know, and, and find out what they have. Maybe, you know, they already have a slew mm-hmm. of symbols and, you know, just uh, getting to know whoever is asking you a quick question. Uh, so then I'll go from there. I can switch gears. Okay. So you really want to know why, you know, maybe this uh, K Custom symbol is $300 versus this Zildjian, uh, you know, I-Series now it is. I almost said ZBT. I'm dating myself. Uh, I-Series, which is their kind of like, you know, uh, entry-level style symbol. Uh, right. B8 bronze symbol. Um, so, you, you know, then you get into the, the inner workings of how they're made, you know. Right. And, and all that kinds of stuff. So. Well, let's let's break it down real quick for folks who might yeah. not know. I recommend this to every drummer. If you haven't done this already, um, Sabian's got a good video. Zildjian's got a great video that walks you through the process at the factory. Um, but essentially, I'm just going to do a, a quick version of what happens. Why is a symbol so expensive? And we're talking cast symbols here. The more expensive materials and the longest process that can a symbol can go through. So essentially, start out with molten metals, combine them, mix them to get the perfect blend of bronze that you're looking for. You're, um, and uh, then you start out by, well, they start out. We don't do this. Yeah, we don't do that. They start out. We don't do any of this. Um, we don't see the symbol till way later. Um, they start out by pouring that molten bronze into molds. You essentially end up starting out with like a hockey puck sized. Uh, casting of bronze mm-hmm. right then that is rolled a bajillion times these are all act- accurate number figures you roll that a bajillion Baz- times yeah bajillion bazillion not quite a bazillion it's a bajillion, bajillion. just underneath uh you roll that back and forth flatten it out then that's where they they punch the shape of the symbol together so once that metal has become pliable to heat it up a little bit essentially give it your basic rough outline shape then they got to make it a circle right because at this point it's all gnarly cut the edge off then it goes into the, the treatment process, whatever it needs to be done as far as hammering is concerned. Um, so that's when you'll see the guys like uh, at Sabian with the hammers or on the machines, you know, at other yeah. symbol Machine manufacturers. hand hammered. Yep, exactly. That's where those hammer marks um, are each done either by hand or by machine. And that um, affects the sound. Everything, every time you smack a symbol, you're affecting the end result, yeah. right? Um, at this point, even if they smack them, they don't sound that great. Um, what they end up doing is moving forward and going into the lathing process. Lathing, essentially, they take a symbol, smack it up vertically on a wall like this. It rotates um, a bazillion times per minute, and then they take a big, sharp knife, and they cut material away. Yeah. Now, where they're cutting material away, how much they take off, how much they leave on, this all changes the sound. Um, you might be familiar with a lot of raw bell rides. That means they skip the lathing on the bell. The whole symbol used to look that way. But somehow that's more expensive, though. Even though they do less work, 
I've always wondered that. <laughs> Quick question. Why, why is it more expensive question. than it? We'll dive into that on the next <laughs> okay. episode. That sounds good. Um, no, that's funny. That is a good point, though. But anyway, um, lay the top, lay These the bottom. These are the things that keep me up at night. These are, Exactly. Um, well, this is the audience for that. Can, you just you gave that to everyone. Yeah, they're in here. Oh, um, hi. But then back to the process. The amount of lathing changes the sound. You'll see a lot of minor symbols. They won't lathe or they'll only lathe a little bit. Um, but long story short, there's a lot of work that goes into this. There's a lot of manpower, sure. a lot of processes that a symbol can go through. So if you walk into a drum shop and there's a symbol for $400, you're like, why is this $400? Mm-hmm. Let's compare it to a less expensive symbol. Mm-hmm. B8 bronze, less expensive material, sure. rolled out in a sheet, punch it out, done. That's the difference. Yeah. That's why you walk in and you see a $75 symbol or a $400 symbol. Right. That's it. There's automation. There's machines. Punch it out of a giant slab of metal. Sure. And don't we wish that the punched out symbols sounded better than the not? That would be in an ideal world. That would be awesome. But as it turns out, it doesn't sound better. It really doesn't. And uh, yeah. Yeah. And it's one of those things. It's one of those things where, you know, you come in. Pick out what you want. There's, of course, different brands. Not to get into anything crazy, but the car comparison. Everyone's got their sedan. Everyone's got their Ferrari level. You know what I mean? There's different levels and different things like that. But the best thing to do, go to your local drum shop. Talk to someone there. If you don't know anything, talk to them. Ask for the recommendations. Because, again, they're going to be able to give you the best value. Symbol prices change all the time. Sometimes a company will raise their prices, but the other company hasn't caught up yet. Mm -hmm. That'll save you a a few bucks. So communicate with your local drum shop, and we'll get you the best thing. Yeah, and I, I have to say... Just to add to that, uh, I love cymbals. I think I love cymbals more than you know, having a new drum come in, you know, seeing a, a slew of cymbals come in used or new for that matter. I love going through them and testing them because you know, not all cymbals, even though they might be the same make and model, sound the same. Mm-hmm. So you really, you know, a lot of getting in there and uh, you know, testing all the different cymbals out. So I think cymbals excite me more than like, oh, a new snare drum coming in. Or, you know, whatever else. I love seeing new symbols come through the door. Love Absolutely. It. All right. So I think it's time to bring on our guest oh. for this section of the podcast. Um, so like we said before, we've got Rick Hamilton um, going to be sitting where you're sitting momentarily. Um, he is a founder of Drums Etc. Plays in Popscotch, three-hour tour. Um, he's a an instructor here at Drums Etc., which is awesome. So you can take some lessons from him. Um, and if you need a place to stay while you're in Lancaster, or not while you're in Lancaster, if you're moving to Lancaster and you need a place to live, check out 550 Lofts. The old Drums Etc. building is now apartments, and he'll hook you up with a great deal there. Um, but we are going to bring him on the show today, and we will transition into our segment, Between the Plots.